my name is Sergi Glakov. I'm a, a Gala Standards Director and the President of Logros International. And today I, I would like to, to make a presentation, uh, well, I hope uh, to make it in 10 minutes, about, uh, about connection between the industry, the Gala, and the Meta Initiative. Gala is a globalization and localization association. It has about 300 members worldwide and 170 uh, from them are European companies, which is 55% uh, of Gala membership. The Gala European members are located in 32 European countries. I would say that these companies are the most active uh, companies uh, in language technology now. And they comprise the nice mix of uh, LSPs, language service providers, technology companies, and clients as well. And the important thing to, to, to point out here is that uh, uh, the association is funded by membership. And of course, the goal is to promote the industry so that the ship rises all, the tide rises all the sheep, uh, uh, ships. And also, uh, uh, of course, uh, the goal is to promote the competitiveness of the membership. So uh, this, I think, goes in line with the, uh, with the direction which has been mentioned today. One of the goals of Gala is to promote its members and to increase their competition, uh, the competitiveness. Now, uh, the, the situation that we have in the language industry now is very fragmented. Now, uh, this is a drawing which I basically scanned from one of my colleagues uh, preparing this presentation, which depicts the technological and informational uh, configuration that uh, language service providers and clients are facing these days. And you see the first row there's data, then the data is going through content management systems, then they go through the uh, translation management system, TMSs, then they go to, uh, into various uh, translation memory systems, into machine translation technologies, and all this done in, very, in quite, uh, quite a great deal of languages, quite a great deal number of uh, languages. So they, if, all you, if all those things coming together depend very much on the client workflow, on the technology that is adopted, and uh, the number of uh, combinations of all these types of things is huge. Well, of course, we understand that uh, uh, translation memories uh, used to be 90% of Tratas, but now this is not the case, because all the server-based methods, first of all, there's WordFast, there are other translation memories, also there are server-based uh, server uh, translation memories and uh, other types of things. So these uh, multitude of uh, technologies actually increases every day. And um, <clears throat> uh, well, what comes into uh, what comes to my ear uh, when when I think about it is the zoo uh, of various things that language service providers and clients have to deal with, and all this uh, variety um, is uh, uh, creating a lot of friction actually in the industry from a practical point of view. The process friction is very high, and it uh, only seems to be getting worse. Machine translation technology is actually not ready for massive deployment, which requires technological level beyond most of the production capabilities of LSPs and clients too, because I don't think that all the clients are implementing it consciously and uh, well, very smartly. Uh, uh, there are cases when it's, uh, it's not been actually implemented wisely. Uh, standards are far from in implemented. Uh, the, the, there is a great deal of uh, the taxonomy that we did on standards in Gala is a uh, is huge chart of various standards, proprietary and uh, open, and uh, the lack of implementation is stunning. The clients, however, demand price level uh, as if uh, high, high quality machine translation is already real. In uh, LSPs and the industry is forced to juggle with skills and tools that have no relations to translation as such, to the language and subject matter expertise knowledge. No unified technological platform exists. Technical overhead is very high. 
Skilled translators and project managers spend time in operations which are not paid for by the clients. That creates a lot of uh, problems internally because uh, not all, not, not all the, we are not lawyers. Not all our time is, is, is billed, right? That uh, we don't charge for opening letters. We, we open them for free, and, uh, but some, 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 somebody has to absorb the cost. And the, the, the entrepreneurs are absorbing, absorbing this cost, and industry suffers. Data, content creation process, lacks understanding of localization needs. In, intrinsically, this is a huge problem, because content creators, they basically are all either unaware or ignorant to the problems that are arise later in the supply chain. What happens is that when clients, well, when content creators create content, they, they do not supply it with uh, adequate uh, uh, information. And uh, this content uh, then is passed with friction through the supply chain. People are guessing what is the content. So that, that's why the context creation layer projects are sort of uh, very promising for real production. The lack of rich metadata uh, actually uh, is a big problem production-wise. So LSPs here are uh, trying to be competitive and trying to survive in a stormy ocean of uh, incompatible technologies and trying to swim with whatever tools they are within their reach. And the most advanced, of course, uh, develop their own technologies. So here uh, we basically I, I issued a call for uh, slides in Gala and I have some, uh, some slides here. The from Gala members who basically were kind enough to provide their slide and their technology. Well, Kilgray sent their slide uh, about the MemoQ uh, technology, which is getting more and more interesting and popular. Uh, increasingly, uh, they, they, they have a quite a, a nice array of tools, which is they believe uh, suits the client needs well. The Lucy software has a, a stunning example of uh, the uh, Basque uh, machine translation case, uh, which actually in resulted in increased competitiveness of the their client, uh, La Vanguardia magazine, which basically uh, on the market where other newspapers in Spain uh, decrease in uh, circulation, their circulation increased in 4% uh, 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 of copies and 7% of readers. It's a real example of high quality machine translation in real time, very stunning. Um, uh, of course, it's rule-based. Uh, that's why it has a certain, uh, mm, let's see, uh, uh, difficulties in implementing uh, language-wise uh, other languages. But the uh, hybrid uh, technology is also coming to the technology. Text and form uh, has been uh, very active in uh, terminology focus. They have a stunning uh, internal. Uh, system which uh, is based uh, uh, on um, extensive terminology work and they have a glossary that they use to their clients uh, uh, to, to basically promote the knowledge and terminology. Um, well, Sistran uh, is also a Gala uh, member. They have a uh, well, very famous uh, machine translation technology which uh, has its own hybrid engine and uh, training server and uh, uh, extensive uh, capabilities. Well, we, in my company, we also uh, done certain uh, uh, translation, machine translation, TM plus plus and T workflow center. So uh, how do we make sure that those and other shining variety of nuts and bolts will not turn into rust, uh, but uh, will be used to build certain uh, nice thing for the future that flies? So uh, the vision that, uh, uh, that we have is that we need removal of duplication of effort that uh, will engage the most advanced ideas of today. And of course, cloud uh, thing comes here into the picture. Uh, with so many various uh, technologies, clearly there is a big and concrete need for innovative language technologies. Uh, we need um, serious uh, investment of effort into the translation technology of the future and collaboration. And I would say that, uh, well, of course, as uh, Gala Standards Director, I would say that standardization and interoperability are key. And, uh, of course, data is the key as well, because if we develop the content in a way that uh, has a layer of metadata behind it, then uh, later along the path, 
with the additional tag data in that uh, content, the translators and translation companies and the entire supply chain will be uh, free from um, uh, guessing and error making in the process uh, of uh, translation into various languages. So uh, uh, here LT Web comes into the picture, but uh, uh, we need more than that. We just need more than a couple of do not translate tags. We need a rich metadata, me me metadata layer to supply this content so that it goes smoothly into the production. So um, <clears throat> I see that the MetaNet is an attempt to bring together a fragmented field, including researchers, language community, language professionals, LSPs, translators, funding agencies, and uh, uh, perhaps even politicians would make some, some funding decisions under the umbrella of, uh, of Meta to promote the vision of the future. And the uh, GALA is a uh, organization of uh, uh, LSPs, practical industry organization of uh, the majority of European membership, uh, will bring the knowledge of the real industry, that's practical problems and needs, and will help to identify research teams and uh, how, to, how to move it forward. And the LSP is actually the source of information about real production problems, what metadata is required, for example, exactly what information is needed, what standards are actually required, and how this uh, um, can be done into the future. So it's non proprietary technology platform for productive engagement. And also, we have, uh, 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 I, I think that Gala has a nice example of a uh, nice experience of cooperation. Uh, so we have so, sort of uh, some experience of collaboration, which we're going to bring to the table in all this. Uh, you know, brainstorming effort around the real industry to, to, to achieve those goals. So this is it, and uh, I'll thank you for your attention. I only uh, uh, two minutes. <laughs>